And on this video, I'm gonna show you what you get inside of this package when you purchase one of the Skritter 3001 OBD2 scan tools. And then I'm gonna walk you through the different features of it to see if this is a scanner that will work for you. And as always, I have placed a link to this scanner in the description down below in case you'd like to get one. But now let's take a look at the Skritter 3001 OBD2 scan tool. First off, we get this mini USB cable, which can be used to upgrade the tool in the future. And we get the scanner itself. First off, they have included this quick start guide that shows what each button on the scanner does and then the instructions on how to find the OBD2 port on our vehicle so we can connect the scanner and diagnose the car. Then they have included another set of instructions in six different languages that show us how to update the scanner with our computer. And here's the actual scanner and this thing is tiny which is going to be great if we want to carry this in the glove box of our vehicle. This is all hard plastic but again at the price point that this tool is being offered I have no problem with that. The buttons are nice and soft and we have a cord length which is approximately two and a half feet long and we also have this little dust cover on here that can be installed to protect this little connector when we're not using the scanner and the screen is about 1.77 inches in size so that is less than two inches but it is in full color let's get this thing fired up so we can see what it actually looks like and first I'll connect the scanner to the OBD2 port of my vehicle if you're having trouble finding the OBD2 port in your car I have made a separate video showing how you you can find it i'll put a link to that in the description down below and the first option on the tool is the diagnose option that allows the obd2 scanner to connect to the car and check if there are any engine codes which are known as dtc and we're going to wait for the tool to connect to the vehicle and see those results and we're presented with the summary screen that shows us that there are no codes on this vehicle. Also on the screen, we can see that the car is ready for smog inspection, as well as the protocol type that the car is using to communicate. And if I press down on here, now we can get a choice of reading the codes if there were any, erasing the codes if there were any, and this will turn off the check engine light. We also get the choice of checking the details of the smog inspection status. So we can check on here if the car is ready, and if it's not ready, what system is the one that we are waiting for to become ready. In this case, all the systems are ready, which is the reason why this car is ready for smog inspection. Moving over to data stream, we can see live data from the vehicle, but the amount of live data that you can see from the car is going to be determined by the car's computer depending on how many sensors you have on your vehicle. Newer cars have a lot of sensors so there's a lot more places that you can pull information for than older cars. For example right here we can see the temperature of the engine coolant and if I scroll down I can keep looking at the rest of the parameters. For example here we have RPMs. This car has several screens of live data that we can pull information for that will be very helpful if I were to be troubleshooting an issue with this car. Then we have the freeze frame option. Now the freeze frame is data that was captured when an engine code was set. In this case, because there are no engine codes, there are no freeze frame data. Then we have the O2 sensor test, and then we have onboard monitoring, EBAP system test and the vehicle information. And if your car does support a running an O2 sensor test, in this car, for example, we have bank one sensor one and bank one sensor two. Let's look at bank one sensor one. You can see on here that there's a total of six different items that we can run a test from. And you can see the details of that test and whether the result was a pass or a fail. But now also, let me show you what's inside of the monitoring tab in case your car supports onboard monitoring testing. I'm gonna hit OK on here. And you can see on here that this car has 10 different items that we can look at on here. And I'll scroll so you can see all of them. But let's look at the very first one, Catalyst Monitor B1. And here again, you get a result of those test parameters and a pass or a fail status. So it is quite a bit of comprehensive test that is built in until this tiny little tool. But what information can you pull from the vehicle information tab? Well, there are three main things that you can see on here. VIN number, CID, and CVN. Now this information is coming straight from the vehicle. So even if somebody were to physically change the nameplate on a car for the VIN number, here you can pull the actual VIN from the computer, CID, and CVN. And pulling the calibration ID from a car's computer can allow you to see if it's running the original software or if the computer has been tampered with or if it has been programmed with 
a different calibration than the one that came from factory. And the next option is gonna be DTC lookup that allows us to enter a code and then it's gonna tell us what that code means. Now this will be handy if somebody had given us a code so we don't have access to the vehicle and we just wanna see what that code means. I'm gonna enter the code, I'm gonna hit okay. In this case, P0446 is for an EBAP issue, Evaporative Emission Systems Bend Control Circuit issue. So it's convenient that we have this DTC lookup option. Next up is tool setup, where we can customize this tool, but there's really only two options that we can change. The first one is languages. And here we have seven potential languages that we can choose from. And the next option is gonna be unit of measure. And here we get two choices, metric or imperial. And the last option is the help option. And Launch is known for including documentation built in onto the tool. So we have a couple of different articles in here. For example, what is OBD? <laughs> and you can read through that article. Not sure why you will wanna learn about what OBD is by reading it off this tiny little screen, but you could if you wanted to. OBD2 modes, those are also on here if you wanted to learn about those. The interesting one is the vehicle coverage because it'll tell you from what year to what year the vehicle started to have OBD2 mandatory by law. Again, not sure why you would wanna learn that about that in this tiny little screen, but you could if you wanted to. The about data stream will show you the different metrics that we can see when we are live streaming with the tool. Now, because you can see there's a lot of them and which one you can actually access is gonna depend on your vehicle, whether your vehicle has a sensor that can read and output that live data and whether the car can support sending that live data out to the tool. Next, we have emissions testing. And here again, we have the different parameters that the tool can check to confirm if the car is ready for emission testing or not. Now again, some of these parameters may not be applicable to your car, depends on whether your car is equipped with it or not. And finally, on the tool information, we can see what hardware version we're running, what software version we're running, and the website where we can get additional help with our Creator 3001 OBD2 scan tool. And that was the launch Creator 3001 OBD2 scan tool. Now, who is this tool for? I think this tool is gonna be for anybody who's looking for an OBD2 scan tool on a budget, but wants to have the most capabilities possible. And this thing has a ton of capability built in for very little money, so a tremendous amount of value, a great bang for the buck. I also see this device being something that you will wanna purchase before you head out on a road trip, and you wanna get familiar with the tool before you go out on a road trip. But if you are stranded in the middle of the road, you can have this in your car, just reach for it, plug it into your car and see what is wrong with the vehicle. I think this tool is also gonna be a tool for the home mechanic who's learning how to work on their vehicle and wants to buy an OBD tool and begin to use it, first for its basic functions and then later for its more advanced functionality. And I think it could be a little bit of time before the home mechanic can actually outgrow this tool. Unless you're programming keys or unless you're looking to activate individual components on your car, this tool I think is gonna do most of it what you need. Now, if you do wanna program keys and activate components in your car, you will wanna look at an OBD2 bi-directional tool. However, those tools can cost thousands of dollars, so I do not recommend those tools unless you need that kind of level of capability. And as you saw, this thing does come with a cable so we can download updates for this tool. And I did check for updates, there are no updates available. I really don't expect it to have any updates in the future because a standard OBD2 tools do not need to be updated like bi-directional tools. However, I think it's a nice feature that they included that. So if for some reason they do release an update down the road, we can download that for the tool. So if you guys have any other questions regarding the Launch Creator 3001, please put that in the comments down below. Also remember, I put a link in the description if you wanna get one of the scanners for yourself. If you found any part of this video helpful, hit the thumbs up button to support the channel. And stay tuned as I have a lot more OBD2 scan tools reviews coming up. Thank you guys for watching and as always I'll see you on the next one.